you think after spending an entire month talking about beat-em-ups that I probably wouldn't want to talk about any for a small while. Well, uh, Double Dragon Neon just kind of came out physically for me, and, uh, yeah, I'd like to talk about it. So thank you for joining me on yet another mystical journey of beat-em-ups. God! Beat-em-ups may have had the hardest time with video games' slow transition into the realm of 3D. There would be attempts to revitalize the genre with games like God Hand or even the multitude of Musou games basically having the same premise of a beat-em-up. But the genre as a whole, or at least the classic side-scrolling format of a beat-em-up, seemed to fade more and more with time. This was of course until we got the refreshing surge of the genre with games like Castle Crashers and Scott Pilgrim vs. The World the video game. These titles were a pretty resounding success and showed companies that beat-em-ups could indeed survive in this day and age. And with this resurgence came a much needed fresh coat of paint for the beloved franchise that is Double Dragon, which hadn't seen a new title since the Atlas published Double Dragon for the Game Boy Advance all the way back in 2003, marking this the newest title in nearly 10 years. The rights of the Double Dragon IP had quite the journey, from Technos Japan, to Million, and then to Majesco Entertainment. Finally, we'd see Double Dragon come to life with Majesco's publication and the now legendary Way Forward's development. But even since then, the rights now lay in the palms of Arc System Works. This new title even had the help from the series creator, Yoshihisa Kishimoto, and would act as a creative consultant in the production of Double Dragon Neon, giving advice where he thought necessary and approving the direction Double Dragon Neon was going. Despite this, Double Dragon Neon plays out nearly, if not exactly like the original, even paying homage to the original opening of the first game. Marion? Oh man, not this again. Marion is kidnapped by the newcomer, Skullmageddon, and it's up to the Lee brothers to track down and rescue her once again. With the new game comes a ton of new features. Both Billy and Jimmy may be masters of the Sosetsuken fighting style, but now they have the ability to further enhance their techniques by acquiring mixtapes. This allows them to perform moves like a hurricane kick, summon lightning, bulldoze through enemies, and even summon a dragon in a screen damaging attack. Additionally, some mixtapes are more passive and increase Billy and Jimmy's stats in a variation of focused balances. Besides, if you will. Is anybody in my viewer base old enough to get that reference? Am I old enough to get that reference? While playing solo is great fun, working together with a friend is even better. The brothers' teamwork is really put on display here with Billy and Jimmy being able to play off of each other's attacks and can even help to revive each other if need be. But the best of the best comes in the form of a feature I've not seen before or since this game. The ability to split each other's health evenly to help keep each other going this is done in a form of a high five, and it's honestly one of my favorite things about this game. Bro, give me five! Billy and Jimmy will have to utilize their abilities as they work their way through level after level of pure mayhem, fraught with the variations of Williams's, Linda's, and Abobo's. I usually pan games for using recolors or reworks of the same character, but trying to tie it into the story always wins me over. The idea here is that Skullmageddon actually clones his henchmen, so that he essentially has an army of Williamses at his disposal. I just can't hate it. The abilities you obtain can be leveled up by acquiring additional tapes for the move you use, and even expanding how many you can carry by giving Mithril to the local tape smith. Seriously, this game gets some good points for its use of puns and humor. Take this tapeworm, for example, that gives out tape decks. Are you kidding me? If it isn't obvious by now, Double Dragon Neon takes a lot of influence from the decade of the 80s and it honestly paints a beautiful picture both visually and audibly. Double Dragon Neon having the ability to level up stats and moves also gives a great sense of progression, which was something that was largely absent in older titles. The feeling of getting stronger as you progress is always a welcome addition to any beat-em-up in my opinion. And this game does this in a multitude of ways. From learning attack patterns to actually increasing your stats, this will be wanted as well as needed when taking on higher difficulty levels. Good combat is essential in a beat-em-up, and we will get into that here in a minute, but the combat as a whole gets enhanced greatly by the music and the art style of this game. 
It's honestly one of the main reasons I wanted to talk about this game in the first place. I remembered enjoying the combat, but the music has never left since playing it for the first time back in 2012. Composer Jake Kaufman did a fantastic job in painting an 80s synth pop dreamscape in the form of Mango Tango. and even the cheesy rock ballads are a gem. Jake Kaufman even takes the time to encapsulate little pieces of genres prominent in the 80s in each of the mixtapes you collect. I don't want to say Jake Kaufman stole the show here, but yeah, he absolutely did. It also goes without saying that Way Forward knows how to do an art style. Every level feels different for the next, and each playing field has a ton of variety, from the neon-bathed cities to some of the Japanese-inspired backdrops covered in afternoon light, to even some spookier areas later on. The visual style is something that truly deserves a lot of praise. A killer soundtrack and a beautiful art style are something that make Double Dragon Neon feel like something all on its own level. I just wish I could say the same thing about the combat. I'm definitely not going to sit here and tell you that the combat of the game is bad by any means. That said, it does feel a bit sluggish. The variety of moves you can do is something that keeps the game feeling fresh, and truthfully, I love it for what it is. And I think overall it's good, with abilities like your mixtapes, supporting your teammate, and even being able to grab two enemies at once just to smash them together, is just icing on the cake. There's even an entirely new mechanic of dodging your opponent's attacks, which gives you something called a gleam that allows you to do a little extra damage over a small period of time. And it does feel that a lot of this game was built around the idea of dodging your foe's attacks and dealing back that damage. But honestly, I never personally found a lot of use for it. And it's not something I personally feel was done super well. While it's a cool feature, I personally never found myself wanting or even needing to use it. It's neat and all, but it sometimes comes off as an afterthought. Add on to that, the pacing and movement of your characters just feel heavy and super sluggish. You do have the ability to run, and while the animation of Billy and Jimmy breaking into a full-on sprint looks nice, it doesn't add much to your speed, and it's not one that actually improves your movement, as it's a commitment. Your character only runs in that direction until you tell them to stop, and this is something that I don't see as bad, just kind of obstructing, but understandable, as this does keep to the original Double Dragon playstyle. Going back to this game after playing games like WayForward's later title, River City Girls, and Dotemu's Streets of Rage 4 just left me see just how sluggish this game can be in regards to combat. And take note that this overall seems like a deliberate choice, and not even really a bad one, but one that just I'd personally feel would benefit from some more fluidity in its combat. Sluggishness aside though, the combat is solid and quite addictive, and when you factor in just every other element that blends this game together, you have a top-notch beat-em-up, one that was a much-needed refresher to the genre as a whole. And it just has to be said that this game can be hard as nails, but not too hard for, say, Hammer and Spike? You get it because the arcade are... <laughs> screw the whole thing. Speaking of game references, I just want to take a moment and appreciate WayForward's devotion to making callbacks to older games. Like Billy and Jimmy commenting that Marion getting kidnapped is nothing new, the mutated clones Bimmy and Jammy which calls back to a mistranslation from an older game, and even the major gaps in the ground call back to the ridiculous level designs of the older titles. And I just have to bring up that our main baddie Skullmageddon steals the spotlight in every scene he's in. Who are you? I'm your worst nightmare! Go get him! How about you? <laughs> <laughs> From his skeleton-related puns to his frustration caused when you break his stuff, he is just one of the best characters all around. I'm just hoping that he makes good on his promise to antagonize Billy and Jimmy in another game sometime. Seriously, all the humor from him and in general is just top-notch. Double Dragon Neon withstands the test of time and continues to be a major staple in the beat-em-up genre. Combining stunning visuals that have held up for nearly a decade, musical genius prevalent throughout the entire game, and a combat system that feels very much expanded upon. 
Double Dragon Neon is one game that you have to play through at least once, but given the addictiveness and levels of difficulty offered to you, you'll probably be back for more. So get this familiar yet new adventure of Billy and Jimmy a fighting chance. Thanks for watching. There, I've satiated my hunger for beat em ups and I should be good for a while. Well, until River City Girls 2 comes out. Hey guys, thanks for watching my review of Double Dragon Neon. Fan of the Double Dragon series? Then tell me your favorite title down in the comments and consider subscribing if you're new. As always, have a great day and keep it practical.